If you, there's no stalling here, you know, it's a, uh, we shall do this even if it means making up, we have to do everything. Okay, so let's, here's the thing, right? <laughs> you know, there's some people, who, uh, I've interacted with some people who say, no, we don't understand thinking that uh, the lecture will stop and then, no. Uh, well, <laughs> we shall do this. Here's the thing, right? Um, Branch example one. Whoa. Okay. Program illustrating branching, right? So let's let's say we are writing a program program to check if um, if if value equals 2.5 same example same drill right these are this is this has become second nature to us now right this is stuff that um, we understand now what we're saying is you, you're interested in implementing a program that's going to check if a value is equal to 22.5 so you already you already have you already have the number that you're going to be comparing against. The first thing you need to do is obviously load this number somewhere, right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to load 22.5 into register eight, right, as a starting point. And then because I'm interested in checking. That's in min. Yes, it's in min. But because I'm interested in checking whatever random value someone is going to use with this, I need to, I need to um, account for that random number, right? Uh, and we can, we can do different things. We can prompt the user to enter it, but we'll simplify things. Let's just say we'll hard code it again. Let's assume this is value entered by user, right? And then we we'll just assume the user has entered 30. We're just assuming the user has entered 30. The way branch if equal works is we are saying BQ, that's instruction, it's predefined, branch if equal, it takes in three arguments, right? Registers you are comparing against. You are going to branch if, in this case, if the value in eight and in nine are equal, I'm gonna tell this piece of program to say, branch to, let's say, uh, I'll call this equal label or something. Yeah. What the program, what, what, what the computer is going to expect when it sees, because once this thing is assembled, there's some, some symbol table that's going to be created somewhere and then you know, this will probably have an equivalent address in memory, right? A label is just an address in memory, it's a placeholder, right? So what this means is that I must have a label somewhere in my source code here that is going to spell out exactly what must be done if these two numbers are equal, right? Uh, so I must have an equal label, like so. And uh, an equal label is the same as main, right? A label is followed by a full column. And in this, in this equal label, we're just going to, to do a simple thing. We shall print. Because we want to print, I need some string somewhere up there. Uh, and just for simplicity, uh, 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 simplicity sake, I'll just say the string is going to be values are equal. So what we're saying is, in here, in, e in e equal label, what we wish to do is if the two numbers are equal, we wish to just print to the console to say equal, values are equal, right? And, and we know the drill in here, we, we just say, uh, how do we print? V0, 4, right? Cisco, but up here we need to load the address of, um, of the string, right? Right equals.
Do you understand this? What I'm doing from line number 15 is something that must be done, by the way, and I'll explain just now, 14 and 15. But observe what happens. If I open up QT spin and assemble and, and run this program, um, thank you very much. I mean, uh, uh, why, why am I, we just assume it's 22. We're working with integers here, not floats and doubles, right? <clears throat> so we just assume it's 22, not 22.5. Do you understand why we had that error? We're, we're, we're not working with coprocessor one, we're just looking at integers, we're simplifying things here, right? It just doesn't change a thing here. So if I run this, right, you'll notice that because the values I just entered are not the same, the, there's nothing that's printed on the console here. But if I, if I change this 9 to 22 and execute this, oh, Lord initialize. Yeah? Conditional branching. You only get to, you are, you are, you are performing you're perform, you selectively performing operations based on whether or not a particular condition is satisfied, is what we're saying. And really, if you look at this, what you can do here is do fancy things like, ah, oh, well, fine, if I have this condition, then maybe I might be interested in having another condition, a branch, if not equal, right? To say, if they're equal, I'm gonna branch here, but what if they're not equal, what do I do? You have a B and Q, right? So it's just a logic. Just need to understand how you use the instruction for branching. The rest is just, you know, logic. How do you go, go about implementing what needs to be done when the two values are equal? Is this making sense now? <laughs>